In this example, we want to find the parameters for a regression line. So uh, here we've got some data x, this is the independent variable and the dependent variable, the y data. And it's always a good idea to graph the data in the first instance to see what the data would look like. So I highlight the cells by left mouse clicking, go to insert, and we want to have a scatter graph, which is here under uh, charts, scatter. And here is our graph for these data. Now on the x-axis, here we've got the x values. On the y-axis, obviously, we've got the y value. And here we would have y in relation to x. So the data indicate that there is an upwards trend. And we can look at that with the trend line function in Excel. So all we need to do is we pick one of the points, right click with the mouse onto it and go to add trend line here. And here we come up with a menu. Well, all we need to do is we click on display the equation for this trend line and the r square value here for the trend line. Now move that up a little bit so that we can see that better. So that gives us an indication of the um, parameters for the trend line, but we can also calculate this. I just move that a little bit to the side. We can calculate these parameters. We don't want to have the graph, although I think the graph is always a very good uh, thing uh, to do. We can calculate the gradient of this trend line with this particular slope function. So here the slope uh, of the um, of this trend line here. So let's calculate that equals slope. And when we start typing, it will come up with some suggestions. And it's very important that we start with the y values, with the dependent values. So left mouse click and drag it down so that we get b2 to b10. And the second parameter is the known x values. So here, uh, this is our independent variable. And again, we drag it down and close the bracket. And we see that uh, the calculated value is very similar to the value that Excel gives us for the trend line. We uh, can also do that for the intercept equals intercept. It comes up with a suggestion uh, what we should do. Again, we do the y values first. And that's important that you do it in this order comma x values close and again we've got our x uh, our intercept here which is pretty close for uh, in the calculated uh, form and in the uh, version that excel gives us here so that is how we can find the parameters we can also find the pearson's correlation coefficient and uh, just as a reminder, this correlation coefficient um, that tells us um, how good this line of best fit is. So here's a quick reminder of what this correlation coefficient actually tells us. And by convention, there is something like a, a scale. If uh, we have a positive correlation coefficient, then the line goes up. So, so here that would be a positive R value. If 
the line goes down, we would have a negative R value. And if the line is basically flat, then our correlation coefficient would be around zero. And we can make an estimate. So for example, uh, if the correlation coefficient is between zero and 0 0.3, then we've got a negligible uh, correlation. If it's between 0.3 and 0.5, we have a low positive or negative correlation and so forth. So we can use this table in order to make a prediction. So let's quickly calculate the correlation coefficient, our R value. And we can do that with the Corel function here equals Corel and uh, it is this one here and we don't need to worry about the order uh, but I usually do the dependent value first and the, this one here close and we get a correlation coefficient of 0 0.976 so that is our correlation coefficient uh, we notice that this is positive so the line goes up in this direction and we are in this range here so we are between 90 and percent and 100 percent or 0 0.9 and 1 and uh, therefore we've got a very high positive correlation here between the x and the y data and if we calculate the r squared value so all we need to do is we take the r value and square it this r squared value which is uh, also reflected here this r squared value actually tells us how well the x values represent the y values um, so here we would have 0 0.9, 0 0.953 or 95.3% of the dependent values, dependent values, these are our x values, uh, our y values, beg your pardon, 95.3% of the dependent values are predicted. Predicted by the x values, by the independent values. That is what the R square value tells us. How well are these predicted by the independent value? And uh, we therefore see that the R squared value can never be larger than 100% or 1 because 100% would be all the Y values are predicted totally by the X values. But we see that we've got a few little bit uh, differences of our Y values from the uh, line of best fit. And these are sort of these a uh, little bit uh, over 4% uh, where we don't get a 100% prediction. So I hope this makes sense and thank you very much for watching.